delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like a chance which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Hallelujah. I wish I had a witness in here today. Amen. God is good. I say God is good. Hallelujah. We are here, praise God, to celebrate. Now, I don't know about you when you celebrate, but we have a good time when we celebrate. Amen? Amen. 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 God is good. Hallelujah. Sister Cornelia, could, could, pronounce that for me. Yes. Hallelujah. She is not gone. I said she is here in our hearts. And all we have to do is just remember the time that we had with her. Amen? Amen? She'll never leave. But we're here to celebrate today. Amen. How I'm going. And I want you to know that, hallelujah, we're not here, we're not telling you don't cry. Because that's a part of our nature. But I want you to know that we know one who's able to wipe all tears from your eyes. Can I get a witness in here? Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to follow the all of service. Hallelujah is printed in the in the, 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 the program. And we want you to follow. Amen. As it, as it is. Amen. At this time, Amen. Call the scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop Cookie Joseph Jr. And that's me, myself, and I. Amen. Amen. Today, hallelujah, Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though in hosts should they camp against me, my heart should not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold his beauty, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his provision, and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart says, thy face, Lord, will I see. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. Oh, God, my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will pick me up. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Oh, don't let my enemies have, have be over me. Hallelujah. I wish I had a witness in here. Amen. Praise God. Because there's a need. Hallelujah, they're going to take me down. Yeah. But Lord God Almighty, I wish I had a witness. Yeah. I would have failed if I wouldn't have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. He said, wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 27. May God bless his word. Hallelujah. Let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. Prayer. Hallelujah. Minister Green. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
Father God. Precious Father, we come before your throne of grace. Father, we come lifting up this great family. Precious Father God, we know this is a home-born service. And Father God, I'm going to ask you to touch each and every one of them today. Because Lord, you said coming in, Lord, we shoot them all. But Lord, when we go out, we shoot them rejoice. And I believe that day when my sister got what they call she was rejoicing. She know and she going to a better home. Yeah, yeah. But Father, touch this family this evening. Father, they can come together and unite together and show love to one another. I believe she told them, do not let your heart be troubled. Yeah. The same thing that I got this call, yeah. you're going to get the same call.
term, even though I had a dad, like all my siblings, like they all had the same last name, so I really, it's a weird feeling to like feel a group, feel like you're a part of a group, but also feel like you're a mom.
me and my friend, bro, we went to do day. And like eight hours later, it was like the best food we ever had. Though. We had so much fun right that day. It was just me, it was just three of us kicking, and it was just probably one of the best New Year's I had. And then Unc came through, and yeah, it was probably one of the best New Year's I had. It was just us three, and Unc was coming through, and man, it's pure energy. And like, even on our fraternity brother, Steve was funny. When we had a uh, real sad to hear about her and everything. And I'm just glad we can be here together in a year like this and everything. Um, because it's true, it's a celebration. Right. She just really was a party. Yeah. You just always love that about her. Yeah. Uh, I want to say a story about uh, Girl Maggie. Um, I don't know why, but I remember one time uh, I was up at school and it was my eighth grade year, or it was it was part of my seventh grade year, and the school that I went to it was at least like eight blocks from the house. And when it was me and my other siblings when we went to school, we always used to walk home. But um, it was just me. And one day I can remember calling my mom. I was like, "Where's everybody have to pick me up?" And I was wondering. And then all I hear is like, "Oh, girl, Maggie run away." So I'm making girl Maggie drive. And I'm sitting like, like inside the school, but like looking out, waiting for a car. And then one of the teachers come out, and it's like, uh, it's a lady waiting outside for me with a dog. And I'm, and I'm like, oh no, that can't be, that can't be my grandma. But we know we got Jerry, and we don't want to be taking her out like that. And then I go outside, run back, get up at the school, sandals, bonnet, Jerry. <laughs>
Mert csak a falvára egy rohanna, nagyát szeretnének szólni. Na, tovább majd a tízszázi felünk, és még várja, hogy a fél idő problémát. De mi nem állom át a gyerekében, szóval 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 látom, a pék szóval szóval mindig benne el. Na, helyet szépen egyetlen, a mindig át drég. And she, she, and I had one moment to see her in Milwaukee, and uh, never, never no one called her. And uh, so I didn't lose her MT. I lost her MT and her sister, you know. And uh, I'm gonna miss her all her laughter because she never, my go by her house, she's not gonna never let me just sit there and be bored. She's gonna keep me laughing, keep picking on me. She's gonna send me somewhere. She's gonna go do something. We, you know, we, a lot of work for us is not for us. You know, because over the years, uh, uh, all, a lot of friends that uh, she had, yeah, they took her down to me, you know, because by being in her neck and just being around her, you know, because I'm going to miss my auntie so much. And, uh, and you know, I just want everybody to know that me and her had a unique relationship. You know, I had a good relationship with all my aunties, but me and hers was really unique because she was like a big sister to me, you know, just a few years older than me. And I remember when I was in kindergarten, she was in the sixth grade, you know, and then she took me to school, man. And, and you know, me and my auntie was very, very close, and I'm gonna miss her all about. Thank you. Just wanted to come up here and uh, send my condolences to the family, um, the friends of Alvarez. Remember meeting Miss Maggie for the first time in uh, summer to Alvarez. Your friend, you to your parents, you try to just make that short and quick move on along. But Miss Maggie had so much energy, and she just drew me right in. And she said, um, which we all know what to her, Anwar, I never heard her call him more. Every time she had cracked, I say, what, she's like, Anwar? Yeah, move Anwar, Miss Maggie. But she would move him along and start talking to me, and before you know it, you had your own relationship. It was like I could be around her, and he not even be around. It's not like a relationship where I only see your mama when you around. I can see Miss Maggie, she lived not too far from me for a while on Capitol Sherman. I can see her right over there and she'd stop me to talk for a while. She'd be on her way to the store. But her energy that passed on the leadership that she had, I can see that carry over and strength into, into her other family members. When I look at Ward, at your time right now, man, I know you're feeling, feeling down and sad. Just know, I just want you to know that we're here for you. As a brother, brother, I never had, never had any brothers. There's no other down here for you, me and my family. Hey, we're here to support you. When I woke him up this morning, he was just saying he ain't going to like this. But he said he, he wanted to come. Just want you to know we love you, man. We're here for you. We're all y'all. We got break y'all. Give it up, Mr. God. It's pastor of the church. It's the family of Williams. And it was really an instant connection. Um, every day was breakfast over on 26 an hour. Okay, the room was out. And um, he was, the warrior had open arms for me every single day. And when I came across Magdalene, Mama Magdalene, she would say, You talk to our warrior today? And that voice, <laughs> that voice was ringing. I said, yeah, I did. Where he is? I done called him, he ain't answering. I'm telling you, I got something for him. I said, Mom, I believe, you know, I'm moving around. She said, his butt need to sit down. So her energy, and then she turned around, she's like, I love that boy. Her energy for her family is undeniable. She'll fuss all day about this boy, but she'll turn around and say, I love him. I love him. Every time she would introduce me, she would say, this is my son, Kevin. I know you don't know him. This is my other son. <laughs> so her energy and her love is so, so genuine yes, that she will be missed. And I pray for y'all. I pray for your strength. Amen. Right. And I know that God will deliver you about this sorrow. But it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I'm saying, breathe, cry. And she has so much energy because we used to be in Texas out over here and laugh, especially when we heard her voice. Mm -hmm. But none of the love for you all, and I continue to love you. Okay. Amen. Good 
Good afternoon, everybody. I want to let you know, out to the family and friends, and, um, you know, Maggie was a godmother to me, and I, I didn't really understand what that meant back when we were coming up. I mean, like, from birth, I, I just remember her, you know, her and my mom were best friends, but like um, Michelle said, when my mom wasn't around, I could come around, and she treated me just like a son, you know, literally. And the main thing I remember from Maggie, me and Adler used to go at it. He had some weight on me. You know, we'd be there wrestling and fighting, talking each other off the bed and whatnot. It was just coincidence. Every time she came in, he'd be on top. He had me bent down, whatever, and she'd smack him up. Like, you know, I was her biological son. And it was just, that was the relationship we had, like, in her laugh, that laugh. I could hear her from the basement, and she'd be on the fourth floor somewhere. Come give me a remote, bring me something to drink, whatever the case may be. It was just relations, her, her energy, and I know she would want this to be a celebration of her instead of, you know, sorrow. So, <sighs> my love and condolences to everybody, man. Boy, it's very strong, man. We're here for you.
be like, whatever you call me, that's who I am today <laughs> for you, Madeline. Yes, she did bring so much energy. I just saw her right before Christmas, and never in a million years would I ever have thought that this would be it for us. Me and Maggie shared her birthday. Her birthday was May 18th. And every single year, she called me. And she was say, Veronica, I love you with a happy birthday. And I would call the same back, or we would grace each other to see who could call each other first. I never understood. Maggie had different phone numbers, so she always beat me. <laughs> she would always call me first, because I never knew where to call her at that number, but that was just who she was. I'm going to truly, truly miss the funniness, her, her energy, everything she brought when she came around. She was like a mother to me. And now, I send my love to you guys. I'm here for y'all. I know this is hard. Hello, family. Pray our strength, please. Amen. 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 I understand it's good as Maggie. But, now I'll be blurry. As long as I can remember, Maggie always introduced me as this key to <laughs> <laughs> Maggie, y'all know Maggie, she was always with somebody. That's how I was introduced. This killer brother, this killer brother. <laughs> but when I was just sitting back there thinking, over a course of 30 years, you know, it's something how we have relationships with people, different kind of relationships. Over a course of 30 years, I've been getting Maggie rides. Everywhere I see Maggie, I pull over, I talk to Maggie, we we'll talk for a couple of minutes, and she'll say, I love you. And I'll say, I love you too, Maggie. And she'll say, which way are you going? <laughs> say, I'm going your way, Maggie. I'm going your way. And, but the good thing was the conversation we had in the car. Right. And this was over a course of 30 years, right? Last time I seen Maggie, then after up over 30 years, you know, you start joking, you start creeping up on them and stuff. You know, last time I seen Maggie was at Pick and Save on 35th and uh in Monarchy. And I saw Maggie in the front talking to somebody. And I, I rolled down my window. And I was like, what's up, baby? You need a ride? Well, hold on, let me let me get back up. Later in her life, Maggie had begun to, to lose her sight a little bit. Is that right? Yeah. She had begun to lose her sight a little bit. So I pulled up and I, and I yelled out my window, what's up, baby? You need a ride? And, and she was squinting and she said, who is that? Don't know. And it made me feel so good. After 30 years, she got in the car. She said, baby, I'm, I'm losing my sight and I can't hardly see, but I knew that was you. So, so we drove on Catatonia and Clark, and we sit there for a minute, and we was talking and just talking and talking. That's the last time I seen her. And just like Cuz said, Maggie, I said I love you, and she and she and she reached over and gave me a kiss, and it was like a wet kiss. Y'all know how wet kisses is. Why don't I do this or that? But that's how it was over the course of 30 years. That was our relationship, and it was good. I, I enjoyed her and, and I highly respect her because you know, we get busy and we see people and we just keep going. Yes. But we gotta make our way around and say, hey, you all right? Everything's good, you need to do something, all it takes is a minute. Right. God give, God take it away. Right. And we got to cherish and honor and respect what God gives. When this day comes, it, it helps you a lot. Yes. When this day comes right here, it helps you a lot. You look back over the relationship and the time, it helps a lot. It, it, it lifts that burden. It takes the sting out of death. Yeah. You have a good relationship. So, I love y'all. Oh, yeah, one thing I told everybody, I told my kids, you know, I'm going to start telling everybody I love them. Yeah. Strange. They're not loving you, because that's what God wants yeah. to do. Yeah. It might be sound strange, 
But I feel like start doing that. Everybody, it's not love. You don't even know me. Okay, I love you. God said we should love you, so y'all should try it too. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Marika Tipton, and I'm really, really close friends with Keila and Anwar. They like a additional sister and brother to our family. And I just couldn't just sit there without telling you all that I love you and that we're praying for you. Magdalene was so authentic. She was just real. She actually looks just like our older sister, Trina. She, her and Magdalene look like twins. It's scary when you see one, you see the other in them. They're so much alike, and they're alike in a lot of ways. Amen. But I loved Magdalene. Magdalene was just, you know, she, she, when she first saw me, she just looked you up and down, you know, like, you know. Well, hi, you Veronica's sister? You her twin? Okay. Well, you family then, you family. All of a sudden, because I was related to my twin, I was family, amen. And she just showed you genuine love and concern every time you've seen her. So I'm hurting for you all. I know what it's like to lose a parent. I lost my mom and uh, recently my father. And I'm just praying for you. And I know God is going to give you strength through here. Y'all can, you know, hold your heads up because you were great. A great daughter and a great son to your mother. Y'all loved her unconditionally, and you took great care of her. And you were a role model for everyone to see. That's how you love your parents. How Keila and how Anwar love their mother, that's how you love your parents. I love you all for your strength. We thank God for all the good remarks that we made, and truly, God. Uh, I would like to say before I take my seat to do it, uh, we are true God. We want to let you know that we're praying with you and we're praying for you because we know that God is able. Amen. We lift you up. Amen. So we want to thank you. Amen. Amen. You all allowing us to be. Amen. To help to you in this particular time. Amen. At this time, praise God, we're going to have the obituary by Rolanda Washington, a tribute to my mother, Annie Washington, and I think that she was nothing. Amen. And we're going to have a selection. Amen. Thanks a lot about his dad, Sister Jackson. Amen. And then we will have you with him by the end of the Hallelujah. Leslie Simpson. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Children and grandchildren were her pride and joy. 
She would talk about her children and grandchildren all the time. Maggie was such a special person, she danced to the beat of her own drum. Maggie was like on November 10, 2021. She was preceded in death by her parents, Mark and Baby Williams. Brothers, Carly Lee Williams, JT Williams, and sister, sisters, Reader Taylor and Lena Wilson. She leaves her chair for her memory. Daughter, Tequila Kelvin Matthew. Son, Anwar Jenkins. Five grandchildren, Isaiah, Brandon, Sydney, Calvin III, Tevin, four great-grandchildren, Melody, Anaya, Rosie, and Hilo. Four sisters, Maddie, Bryant, Lee, Leah, Sheriff of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, Marky, um, Carter, Shanice, Cedric Owens from Sacramento, California, one brother, George Williams of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, one sister-in-law, Barbara Williams of Little Rock, Arkansas, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and other loving family. Two to three hours prior. 
after about 20 years, she got on and she's like, no, for real, for real, give me the real time. <laughs> so then we would move it up two hours. <laughs> we here to say see you later to the person that loved Kenny Rogers more than anybody I know. <laughs> and to that, I know every Kenny Rogers song. <laughs> I'm here to say, see you later to a person that will give her last to you. Yeah. I remember we could never get in contact with her, so Calvin and I got our cell phone. Two weeks later, I said, Magdalene, I've been calling you. Oh, girl, I gave that phone away. He needed it more than me. <laughs> For that, we have a cell phone deal. <laughs> we here, we here to say, See you later to a person that could cuss you out, tell you what she felt about you, and then look at you and say, I know you're not going to hold no grudge. I know you ain't mad all that. And we all know that. We're here to say see you later to a woman that loved her kids unconditionally. She loved her grandkids unconditionally. She was the birthday grandma, but she bought a cake for every one of their birthdays. And I would say, Megaline, don't buy those big old cakes. I'm going to buy what I want to buy. I'm going to get these kids these cakes. And if you look, she's at every birthday party, and every birthday party is a big cake. And that's what she was. She here, we're here to say, see you later to a person that always thought Calvin was the better half. He told me all the time. Get off the phone, let me speak to the better half. <laughs> she had no problem telling me that. We're here to say, see you later to a person who never, never, never hung up the phone without saying, I love you. She never got on the phone and didn't ask everyone by, by name. How Sydney doing? How Trey doing? How Isaiah doing? How Brandon doing? How's Tevin doing? And how's the better half? <laughs> she always did. We're here to say, see you later, to a person that always reminded me, no matter what happened, she was the mother. She would tell me, I'm your mother. You my child. This is what you're going to do. And she, had not, she didn't have a problem with it. We're here to say see you later to a person that I call upon. Yeah. You know what? That's your no more pain. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And yes, I will see you later. <laughs> Oh, you put them on a pedestal. 
Santos como <risa> Take care of your mama. 
I'm at a big floor and I want to be up to the table. I know she's going to play about me and I play about her. a certain way, so much you want, a bunch people want, and you want to give them stuff, and you want, want them to do something, but get back with them in your own life. <laughs> and they four of them. <laughs> you just have to love them, and let them live in your own life. I was like, mine, get you a house. You can stay in. You don't got a way out. Should I stay out? Huh? Ooh, ain't nobody gonna come see me way out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to more how to get down the city. Like, like, why you don't even have to go to this city? Because that's what she wanted to be. In the end, I know my mom just she didn't want to be alone. I never wanted to be alone. I couldn't stay here no longer. I had to move forward to be everything that she wanted me to be, that she told people I was. <laughs> and my left side, the last thing. And I wish it took me down put me next to
friends, his brothers, his sisters, his colleagues, Lord. The upcoming weeks, the upcoming months, the year, everything that they will need, Lord. That we make sure that this family has taken care of, been taken care of, the way that you've taken care of, Lord. We bless you and honor you, Lord. I ask that the words that come out of my mouth are pleasing to you. Amen. Amen. First of all, I'd like to, of course, acknowledge uh, Bishop for allowing us to be in his space today. I never take it lightly that somebody else has opened up their pulpit um, and giving me a word this morning, too. So I bless you for that. Uh, everyone else who has served today, uh, God bless you for, uh, again, allowing us to be in this place. So I thank you. Uh, condolences, of course, uh, to the grandkids, friends, family, um, children, um, just everybody who's been affected by this. This is hard for me. This is a little different for me with War being uh, one of my best friends for 20 years. I'm good. Yeah, man. I'm going to open up with the scripture, Isaiah 41 and 10. And it reads, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. I was looking for the right words as I was speaking to Ward. Um, I go back 20 years to Ward. Um, best friend, my other brother sitting right here. Uh, and best friends with war, we went to college together. Anytime you ask me something, you're looking for the right words to say, you're looking for inspiration, and you're looking for God to lead you yeah. with where to go. Amen. And you know, I'm just going to be honest, you're looking for big words, you're looking for things that's going to have be a part of the movement. All I was getting in the beginning of the week was family and loyalty. I'm like, Lord, you know, the basic words. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do I do with family and loyalty? That's so easy. And I tried to get some other things. I prayed again. And the only thing that kept coming into my spirit was family and loyalty. So I said, okay, let me look up these words. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I went in. I looked up um, family. It was a definition, I thought, a group of people who operate as a family unit and look after one another. And then I added my twist on that. It was a group that operates uh, together and would do anything for each other. That was my definition of family. Of course, I looked up loyalty. And it's a strong feeling of support and allegiance. And then I thought about our relationship uh, with Ward, with Anwar, um, who has been my best friend. Yeah, we met in college, and just like Miss Maggie, it was the same thing. As soon as you meet him, you got a friend for life. And I didn't, he probably didn't know this, but I didn't like Ward at first. Um, <laughs> he came up to me like the first day, we had mutual friends, and he just came up to me, he was like, uh, yeah, I know you. And I'm thinking, like, man, I don't know you. And uh, he said, you know me. And I'm like, I don't really know you. And he was like, I know you. And we went to go play basketball. And um, after that, we were just tight as ever. And when I say tight as ever, I know people think, yeah, you got friends that are tight. No. If you are a friend with war, it is a different level of tight. We were brothers. I've never had a friend in my life uh, who would ride out for me the way Anwar has rolled out for me, who has been just an extended family member. And who just had the same passion that his mom had. We could enter any room and it would just brighten up. Yeah. We just had that same type of spirit in everything that we did. Amen? Mm -hmm. And he was just a go-getter. You know what I mean? And he made us go-getters. And we had a group at school of like five of us. And we did everything together. If one person had a dollar, we would break it down. Everybody had a quarter. Whatever we needed to do. This was the guy he was. I remember one time we wanted to go to a concert. Mm -hmm. So bad. I don't know if any of y'all know what Jam for Peace was. Now, this was before I was saved. So Jam for Peace. If you know about Jam for Peace, you get your outfit together early. You know what I mean? So you get your stuff and you lay it out. That's what we used to do. But this was a summer. We was hurt. None of us really had any money. Nobody was working. I got a job at the end of the summer. Um, but we didn't really have any money, but we wanted to go to Jam for Peace bad. So in my mind, you know, we, we ain't going to be able to go this time. We don't have tickets. We don't have nothing. So the day of Jam for Peace, we're trying to figure out war. Called everybody like, man, we're going to jam for peace. So I'm like, all right. So I'm thinking in my mind, I, I thought we had tickets. And uh, so I'm thinking we got tickets to go to jam for peace. So we, we get down there, we got our outfits on. And uh, we get to the gate. I see Ward kind of looking around. And he saw some shirts, like some Summerfest shirts outside the gate. And he told everybody to put one of these Summerfest shirts on. Like, put a Summerfest shirt on. So I get the shirt. And then, you know, you don't want to mess up your real outfit that you came in. You know, so we put these summer fresh shirts on, and he said, look like, look like you belong here. So everybody kind of straightened up, and we walked to the gate, and one of the guys said, where are you going? And, you know, Ward told him where we was going. He let us right in the gate. So we, we got in. 
So we're in, we're in Jam for Peace, but we don't have seats. We don't have anything yet. We're just kind of walking around looking like we don't belong there. We take the shirts off real quick, and War tells us he'll be back. That's he, this is his favorite line, he'll be back. So we kind of just looking around, and all of a sudden, I see Ward, and anytime he does this to you, that means it's all good. So he came to get us. Not only were we in Jam for Peace, but we ended up being like in the third row at Jam for Peace for the rest of the show. But this is what he did, and this is the type of loyalty that he had. He always wanted to see all of us come together. And it was so many occasions like this. I remember another time, this all ties into what I'm doing. We wanted these tennis shoes so bad. We had a basketball team in school that was real big, um, intramurals, and we, we liked to dress nice. That was like our big thing on the court. And we all wanted these shoes with some foam posits. At that time, you know, 150, and we struggled again in school. And, but we got all these other shoes in our dorm room um, that we're not really doing nothing with. So we're trying to figure out how we can get these shoes. I just gave up. And uh, Ward said, we're going to get these shoes. Not only just for Ward, the whole team was going to get these shoes. So we scrounging around the dorm, and Ward told everybody, go get a pair of shoes that you haven't really been wearing, but they look new, and let's jump in the car. So everybody got a pair of shoes. We jump in the car. We start riding around. And uh, we went to, a, I'm not lying, we went to probably 12 malls trying to take these shoes back, and nobody would take our shoes back. So Ward said, we're going to drive to Chicago. We're going we're gonna to go out like Chicago. Now, we got a game that night, too, at 7. We started at 10. So we go all the way to Chicago, we have sleep in the car, we go in, and Ward found a store that would take these shoes back, and the whole team got these shoes. So we all got the shoes, got back in the car, and we came back, and I was just thinking about loyalty, I was thinking about family. I was able to go over to the family's house the other day, and you know, Tequila let me right in the house, and you know, this is COVID season, so when somebody let you in the house right now, you really family. Yeah. And I sat in there, and we talk about um, it's Maggie, and it was everything that Ward embodied. It was family. It was loyalty. She uh, loved to pray over her food. She wasn't necessarily in church all the time, but how many of you know sometimes those are God's That's bigger right. service? Amen? That's she right. loved it, and she had a heart for the people. She wanted to see everybody win. I wanted two people. It wasn't enough for her to get something, and you don't get it. She wanted to see everybody be able to get what they deserve. And this is the same mindset that Ward had. This is the same mindset that Tequila has. So, again, I just want to encourage you all as you go forward to keep that same mindset as the family, to yeah. continue to yeah. console one another, to continue to be there for each other going forward. And it got me to thinking a lot about God's family as I thought about family and loyalty over and over and over and how God wants to protect us, how God wants us to be a part of his family, how God wants us to continue to be loyal to him. And so many times we tell ourselves that we're going to be loyal to God. This is the time. This is the time I'm going to do it. This is the, this is the next year. If I just do this, if I can stop doing this, when I stop smoking weed, when I stop drinking, when I stop doing this, this is when I'll give my life completely to God. And then we get to a place like this where we come to a funeral, we have to sit somewhere, and it sits heavy on us again because we know we've made all these promises to God in the past and we didn't follow through on them. And I think of Matthew 6 and 33. Ye first the kingdom, and everything else will follow after that. And is that truly our mindset to seek ye first the kingdom? I remember I was at my worst. My grandmother had passed, and just a little bit of my background, I was love the club, love to drink, love to smoke weed, just like everybody else. Can we be real here today? And, and that was my mindset over and over and over again because I had been doing it for such a young age. We have been doing this for a long time, party and party and party. And I didn't see any end. And I didn't really know any ministers or any pastors that were really living for God. Myself and Ward, we had an experience one time in college where there was a guy that was saved and um, he... He was serious. He brought everybody together and he got us all in one room. We was having a lot of conflict on the campus and he brought us in the room and he prayed over all of us, all over the all over the, the guys that were having these problems at school. And it was probably one of the scariest moments of my life. My heart was beating and you could tell that this guy was on fire for the Lord. And people that were, you know, trying to be thugs at school and everything else, everybody was in tears. We had a serious moment when we were there. This lasted hours. We were in this dorm room. So myself and Ward, for probably the next couple of days, we made sure we wasn't going to cuss. We was holding each other accountable. Uh, we wasn't doing nothing else. And we were walking around like, man, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't do this. And the guy that really spirit this big movement for all of us, he ended up kind of going back to his old way. So we looking at him like, man, if you're not saved, we might as well go back to what we were doing. So now we go backwards again. We go right back in the same system, the same mindset, the 
the same spirit of not walking with God. So fast forward a little while later, I'm still doing the exact same thing. And then we finally met a man of God. See, myself and Ward, one of our best friends at that time, went home for a weekend and came back and he had gave his life to Christ. Now, we heard that before. So I'm sitting around like, okay, here we go again. He had another experience and he gave his life to God. And we were roommates at the time. This was another one of our best friends. So I'm watching him, and I mean, I watched him like a hawk in our room every single night. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a, a spiritual battle almost. I'm coming home from class, I'm turning on music and cussing and doing everything else. He turning the music, he putting on gospel music every single day. And I was really starting to get sick of him. But the one thing I had to always look at and I watched was his walk with the Lord. It was consistent. Every single day. I would look up, the light would be on at 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning sometimes, and I would look up and I would see him in his word, on his knees, and on his knees, praying, reading the Bible. And I couldn't understand it at that time. But that soul to see. Amen? How many of you know sometimes you need to see something that can make you change your life? Right. You've seen right. so many fakes. You've heard so many people talk about it. That's but right. you need to see the real thing. Right. And he was the real deal. Now I wasn't ready for it. He got on my nerves. As a matter of fact, he was so sick of us. And what we were doing, he ended up moving out of our dorm room and didn't even tell us. So I look up one day, he left a, like a Dear John note on my bed because he said, for, for you and the rest of the guys to get where you need to go with the Lord, I need to remove myself from you and just pray. And for us at that moment, that hurt us. This was one of our best friends. Mm -hmm. And he left. And not only did he leave our room, we had a basketball team. He left there too. We go to play the game one night, and he was on a Christian team. He didn't even tell us. He could switch teams. And then the team beat us. So we mad about that. And then, you know, the team asked after that, could they come pray with us? I couldn't believe it. But it gave me a seed. It gave me something that I can look at and I can look forward to how to change yeah. my life. So then you fast forward a little more. I'm still partying. I'm still moving. But God is trying to get my attention at this point. My grandmother, yeah. she's dead. You know how it is. You don't have a lot of people coming around you. Yeah, they came to the funeral. Yeah, they called for two days. Yeah, they came onto the house once. But I didn't have anybody <laughs> really consistent speaking into my life. Only my, right, right. my brother right here and my other friends. So I'm, I'm going every which way. I'm smoking weed. I'm getting sick of it. And I decide my friends wanted to go to Miami. So we go to Miami. I told myself this was going to be the last time I ever took one of these trips with the fella. So I get out there. And immediately, we got on the plane. I was feeling fine. And I got so sick on the plane. I got sick like to the point if I would have been here, I probably would have went to the hospital. That's how bad I was feeling. Mm -hmm. So I got so sick on the plane. As soon as we got off the plane, all my friends wanted to roll weed. I'm just going to be honest. And I, and I couldn't smoke any of the weed. And um, I said, I need to go to Walgreens. I need to get some medicine. So I went to Walgreens in Miami. I'm in Walgreens in Miami. Everybody else kicking it. I go get some medicine. So I just said, I'm going to take a whole bunch of night oil. I'll be all right. So they said, let's go to the club. I said, I think I need to sleep. And they said, well, let's just go. So I go to the club. I'm the only one sober. They all having a good time. And party. I'm just standing there. I'm coughing. And uh, it's time to go. We leave the club. And all of my friends were walking in front of me. And I was the only one behind, and I was just watching everything that was going on in Miami. I looked to my left, I looked to my right, and I watched all my friends just clowning and acting a fool. And I said to myself, I'll never forget, I said, God, is this what I look like? Mm. Is this what I sound like? Is this what people see me as all the time? Go ahead, brother. And it was like an audible voice said, yes. Mm. And I could, and I got so spooked in Miami. We had another five days to be in Miami, and I was ready to leave right then. I, was, I tried to get a flight. I tried to get out of there. My friends couldn't understand what was going on. And I told the Lord, I said, if you would just get me home, if you just get me home, I'm going to serve you, I promise. And my friends were like, what's wrong? Because you, that was the ringleader. I'm setting up where we going, what we going to do. And now they all stuck. They don't have that. They don't know. I'm like, I don't know. Um, so we get back, and did I follow God? No, I didn't. I got back. I was saved. That's what most of us do. We get back for a second, and I go right back to the same thing. Fast forward, I get married. My, I have a daughter who has extreme health problems. This is right after my grandmother died, so I'm still just lost. Um, they tell me my baby girl has a heart disease. She's going to need three open heart surgeries to have a chance to live. So I go into the hospital. She has the first surgery in two months, and they brought her out. Surgery was 16 hours, and I couldn't even recognize her when they brought her out. I didn't, I, it didn't even look like it was my child. And I didn't know what else to do, but I fell to my knees in the middle of that hospital, and I gave my life to the Lord. 
And I told myself in that hospital, I will serve you. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it's supposed to be like. But if you continue to walk with me and you continue to show me, I will serve you with everything that I have in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And Miss Maggie, she served. She served in a way that was unconventional. Sometimes it looked crazy to those with, with, with their natural eyes. You're right. hearing about somebody going to get cigarettes and you're thinking to yourself, nobody can go to Kingdom. They're talking about they're going to get cigarettes. I just told you, I'm. I'm can you show somebody just by Can looking die. at them on the Can outside die. what you think they are and who you think they That's are? Right. Maggie will pray when someone, let me tell you something, when someone is not in church, when they're not going to church every single week and they're not telling you about church services all the time, and they are having still having a reverence for God, That's praying right. over their food, and telling That's you right. that you should be praying over your food, that you should be thankful and being thankful in the little things. Ward just told us the hood was fine to her. An apartment was fine to her. She didn't need what we thought we all needed, the big house, this and that, Hallelujah. this and that, this and that. Because you know, with any of those things, we're still not content. I couldn't wait to get the apartment. I got the apartment. I couldn't wait to get the first house. I got the first house. I couldn't wait to live in a better neighborhood. I got in a better neighborhood. I couldn't wait to get the job. I got a better job. I couldn't wait to be a teacher. I was a teacher. I couldn't wait to be an assistant principal. I'm an assistant principal. And you know what? None of those things None of it. It is only my relationship with Christ and walking with God on a day to day basis. So I'm asking you, I'm thinking all the children today because we've all been to funerals. We've all sat here. We've all heard the speech. We've all heard the talk over and over and over again. And I'm not about forcing anybody to come to Jesus. I'm not going to tell you this walk is easy. I'm not going to tell you. I just have to pray all week, get on my knees just to have the strength to come up here and face my brother and face Tequila and face yeah. the family and pray over this great lady, Miss Maggie, today yeah. and send a word her way. It's not easy. But you know what? We can't do it in our flesh. That's I couldn't right. put that weed down in my flesh. Right. I couldn't stop drinking in my flesh. Right. I couldn't stop going to the club in my right. flesh. Right. I had to depend on God for every single yeah. step yeah. and every single move that I made. Yeah. And you can have that same promise. You can That's have right. that That's same right. fulfillment. You can have that same contentment. Praise the Lord. We are in a time right now, and I'll go to the scripture before I end. You know, Ward and I would talk about all of the people that we lost in 2020. Almost every other day we'd be on the phone. Man, so-and-so died. I know, so-and-so died. We actually had a disagreement about two weeks ago about, uh, I was trying to tell you, telling you all these people that died in 2020, and I was saying, you know, if people die like that every year, we just don't pay attention. We couldn't have them. So it's like, we, we, our attention. Is open right now, you know what I mean? And he was like, I never really thought about it like that. Then he sent me a picture like, no, a lot of people died in 2020. And I started looking at the list like, yeah, it was a lot of people. And it's going to continue to happen. We'll be at another funeral. Right. We'll be sad again. Right. We'll be upset again. But while we are here, while we are here, what are we still doing while we are here? The Word of God says in Ecclesiastes 3, it says to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck, what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep like today, and a time to laugh like today, a time to mourn like today, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. My question to you today, what time is it for you? Miss Maggie lived a life that every moment mattered. She smiled, she had fun. The one thing that we continue to hear, she was gonna have her a good time. Yeah. And it didn't take much to have a good time. Yeah. What time are you in right now? Is it gonna take another funeral? 
to get your life right with God? Go ahead, brother. Is it going to take another incident? Because we just don't know. We just don't know. This is, I, I'm not shocked much uh, being a minister. You know, you kind of prepare your mind. You get calls all the time. People asking you to pray. Um, but every now and then, you get shocked. Yeah. And this call, when my brother called me, was shocking to me. And it's been shocking all week. And um, it hurts. It hurts to watch my brother go through this pain. But one thing about us, we're going to get through it together. And he knows that he has a friend forever. I'm not going to leave him hanging. He's going to get sick of me calling. He's going to get sick of me checking up on him. And I encourage you all to do the same with the family. To tequila, to the grandkids again. Um, it's love. Nothing but love. And we want to remember this life of Miss Maggie. What attributes did she have that we can continue to take with us? And if she had another moment, if she knew what she knew now, what would she tell us? And I believe that she would tell us that the time is now yeah. to get ourselves right yeah. and to get ourselves complete with God. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it in the bishop's hand to come up and do an altar call. I'm in his face, so that's only right. But again, I encourage you. And um, I love you, brother. I love you, Tequila. I love the rest of the family. And we will get through this together. Amen. Amen. Amen.
they have a whole lot of flowers, but I do think they have some designated flower ladies to come forward. We tell them we're going home. Okay. We need some ladies to come forward. To assist us with the many, many flowers.